Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ronan Vico. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a multi-language app like this one, where you can click your preferred language and everything on the app changes, but we're going to create that without any premium license or any API license. We can do it the standard mode without needing any additional features. So how, how I did that and how you can do that on your project. Let's go step by step. The first thing that we're going to do here is to create in your database. I'm using SharePoint list, but if you use Dataverse or any other database, just create an empty table. I'm going to call it TB language. Here at this table, I'm going to create three columns. The first column is going to be the language. So language. The second column going to be a code. So this code can be, for example, and that's why I recommend you to use, it's the name of the object on the Power Apps. So for example, here I have the header one. So I'm going to use the name of the object like code for me so I can identify the exactly translation that I need to do. So I'm going to call here just uh, object name, but you can call it code and use codes. That is not a problem. Language, object name, and of course the translation. You can use here uh, the multiple lines of text if you if you know that you're going to have multiple lines of text in your application. But in this case, I'm going to use the single line of text. I'm going to call it the text. Okay. So basically, here we're going to fill this table with the translations that we need. So when I have a new object in my application. I will use my preferred language to create it. And after I, I develop this app, I can come back and fill the table language with the translations. What we're going to fill here, it's the language that we want to have on our app. So for example, I'm going to insert here English. Uh, um, no, I'm going to insert here Portuguese. And I'm going to insert here Spanish. Okay. So I'm going to have this both language and the English language. I do not need to fill here. Why Rona? Why you won't have the English here? Because like I said, when I develop the app, I will be using the English language, right? So I don't need to fill on the table. I'm going to have the language right here on my screen, but you can fill here if you want to. Let me explain it better. What we're going to do in the next step is to register in the table this object right here. For example, the header one that is selected here, the text of header one. So I'm going to get the header one, insert here, and the text in Portuguese is going to be meu app. In Spanish, the header one is going to be Mi aplicación. The next step here is to save the current language in a global variable, right? So for that, in my app, like I showed before, I use a uh, radio button, a group of radio buttons. So let's do it, but you can have a menu, you can have a specific screen for that. It's your choice, right? So I'm going to have here uh, radio buttons and the items here is going to be the language, right? The English language, Spanish language, and the Portuguese language. So the user can select. When they select, I'm going to change the global variable uh, that's going to be the current language. So let's do it here on on change, on change, set var my current language equals uh, self selected dot value, right? And our default, our default selected item going to be value var my current language. So it's blank right now, but we can do an on start or uh, the first screen to set set var my current language to English. Okay, you can have that on a database, the preferred language for the user or something like that okay so let's run here the on start run on start now we have the english fulfilled and when i change 
the global variable going to change. Now that we have the language of the app in a global variable, we can go connect to this SharePoint list that I created before. So let's go SharePoint here. Let's connect to the TB language connect. And now with this on my application, I'm going to go directly to my text where I, I want to do the translation. And like I said before, we have filled here the header one and the translation, right? So we're going to use the lookup to get this value right here. But the English value, we don't need to do to do the search, right? I already have here. When we are developing, we don't want to go to the database to change the value of my current language, you know? We are developing, so let's save our preferred language, the language that we develop, it could be English, Spanish, Arabic, I don't know. You can save this value right here because we're going to insert here the coalesce that's going to try to look up the English value and if don't find, bring the welcome screen. So look up TB language, os TB alias as TB, where TB dot object name equals, and I'm going to insert the object name right here. We don't have an easy way of getting the self code object name yet, but in the future, maybe it's going to be easier for us. But right now we, we need to copy this object name here and insert here. That's why I said before, you can use a code or something like that. I prefer to use the object name because it's easier to change that it when I need it. So the object name is going to be this one. And of course I need to use the TB language that I want to bring. So and TB language equals uh, for my current language, right? So I'm looking up the table, the text where the language is the language selected and the object is the object that I am at right now. And I'm going to bring back at this lookup the text of the translation. If I don't find nothing, if the lookup is blank, I want to return the welcome screen. So the coalesce is going to try to find in this lookup and if not find, if it is blank, he is going to, to return the welcome screen. So here we can see that it's already working. Mi aplicación in Spanish. When I change Portuguese, mail app. When I click in English, welcome screen. The welcome screen is showed to us because this lookup is going to be blank and we already have the text here. That's why I said before, we can have the main language, the language that we develop the, our application in the text without needing to register that on our table TB language, okay? Next step is just to change everywhere in the app that you, you, you want to translate. So for example, here I want to translate. I will get this object name, add new item here. The object name is that, the text is going to be uh, testing PT and language is going to be Portuguese. I'm going to copy that to a new item here. Uh, so copy, paste, change to Spanish, testing Spanish. And I can have this table like a parameter table where I can change easily the translation of my objects. In the text of the button, I'm going to insert again the coalesce like this one. But we can use an UDF to make it easier for us, right? Instead of copy and pasting the same coalesce with lookup and, and, and rewriting the same code again and again and again, we can transform that in a UDF. So I'm going to go here on my application uh, formulas and let's copy this coalesce 
and transform that in a formula. So how to do it? Let's start here with a get translate function, get translate text, where we're going to insert a text, right? Object name, type text, and return a text. So I'm creating a parameter here to, to send the object name, but we don't need to send the language because it's a global variable, right? We, we don't need to insert a parameter because we already have a global variable to that. So text object name equals, and I'm going to copy this coalesce paste here, but I'm going to change the header one to text object name. So, and about this test, Rona. Yes, I need this parameter too. The text, the main text, main lang language text. I'm going to create here this parameter. Main language text of type text. Now we have this function to use in my app. I can go here in the future item button one and use my function get relate text, insert my object name and insert my main language. So for example here, featured item, right? Featured item. Here we need to insert the quotation marks, right? It's a string, not the object. So feature item button one. And now when I change the Spanish here, we're going to see the translates that shows up here. One thing that, it, that would be good for us that is not available right now, I don't know uh, if we're going to have that on the feature, is to get the name of the current object, like something like self.object name or something like that. And we don't have it yet, so in this case, I need to fill one by one with the button name, for example, the object name. And it's, uh, it's not that something hard to do, right? But it's better than spending money in an API who are going to bring up not the right translation that you want, because here is exactly the translation that you want to show. If you use an API to do an automatically translate, maybe it won't work well. And also you need to pay for that. This way that we are doing right here, it's free and you can use it on your own project. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you watch it until the end, comment down below your feedback and leave the word in your comment, the word Apple. So I will know that you watch it to the end. It's a way of knowing who watched the entire video. And consider to subscribe and share, thumbs up. I would appreciate it if you can share it uh, on some groups or LinkedIn and, and tag me. It would be really great so we can bring more people to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and we see you in another class, in another video and please subscribe.